Alright, 7.2, we started somewhere, and now we're here. Uh, okay, yeah, so now, now we're actually doing the average area. Alright, um... So if I'm thinking, think of just basically the concept of average, what would I do to find the average of something? Add them all and then divide by the number I'm adding together, right? Okay. Uh, similar, right? So, but in this one I'm talking about over a closed interval from here to here. So whatever it is, so it's actually going to be 1 over b minus a over that, so it's going to be from my my uh, start to finish, but it's actually the, the finish to the start in this case. Uh, so in this case it's going to be, uh, I'm going to find the average area, right? So the area, so if I say area, you guys should automatically jump to what? I'm taking the integration, integration right? integration over from B to A, right? Mm -hmm. So it's going to be integration from B to A, so it's going to be 0 pi. Now to find the average, I would take, right, figure it out, add them together, and divide by how many, right? Okay. Same thing goes for this. B minus A, so it's going to be pi minus 0. So the average area of this. And my function is going to be from cosine or x, okay, and that's going to be a dx, right? Yes, no, maybe. Yeah, so uh, I don't like cosine to the fourth. So what could I do instead? What do we? What was that last thing we did? Okay, so yeah, cosine squared, right? Yeah. So this is going to just turn into. Let me see. Cosine squared x squared, right? Yeah. But I can replace cosine squared with. Can I do a double angle? So yeah, the double angle, so it's going to be what? We, we had it on yesterday's notes. Let's see. Yesterday's notes said what? One half, one plus cosine two x, right? So it's still, bring this down, one over pi from zero to pi, and that's going to be one half, one minus, no, it's plus, sorry. Plus cosine of 2, and these are x's, right? Squared dx. So now what do I do? Say expand. Let's expand that now. Let's expand that. That, that squared, I have a binomial squared, right? So since I have a binomial squared, I need to square that piece. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. To your phone. Did you write it down or are you texting it to someone? Lies. Uh, all right, so let's see what we're going to have here. Now, there's one thing that's a slight issue with this. What is my slight issue? And I, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you I messed it up, and I okay. I messed it up for a reason. Nope. Because this is a common mistake that everyone's gonna make. Anyone see it? This is on the outside of the square. Yes, the one half on the outside of the square, isn't it? Should it be on the inside? Yeah. It should be on the inside, right? So it should be like this. There. It should be on the inside because I have to square that one half also, right? Yeah. 
But since that one half is a constant multiplier, what can I do with that one half now? Square. I can square that, then take it out, right? I can square that, then take it out. <clears throat> so you guys got to identify that and actually take care of that so you don't lose it. That's going to be one of the biggest issues. So this one half is going to, when it comes out, it's going to become what? What four? Okay, so it's going to be 1 over 4 pi from 0 to pi. And I'm going to expand my 1 plus cosine 2x, right? It's going to turn into 1 plus 2 cosine of 2x plus cosine squared of 2x. And all that's going to be my dx. <clears throat> yes okay so i'm going to use fundamental theory of calculus and i'm going to like yeah break it up because i don't like that last part that cosine squared 2x right i don't like that i do not like it here or there i do not like it anywhere but what am i going to do with it though i'm going to do yeah. the same thing that i just did right I'm going to do the same thing I did, but I'm going to break it down to further, so I'm not going to have any more squares. I'm going to have a whole bunch of double angles, but you know what? I'm okay with that. So from there, let's take a look. So it's going to, I'm going to rewrite this 1 over 4 pi from, that's a pi, 0 pi 1 <laughs> plus 2 cosine of 2x dx so that's going to be that piece right there right and then it's going to be plus the integral same thing it's going to be 1 over 4 pi 0 pi cosine squared of 2x dx Yeah, I need another page. Insert page. Okay, so I can do my first part. I can do my first part pretty easy, so I'll have to worry about that too much. So that's gonna give me, so since these are all dx's, it's gonna be four pi, and it's gonna be x, and what is this gonna give me? Okay, think about it mentally, mentally. So the 2x on the inside is my problem, right? So if I think about it mentally, so I'm like, all right, the 2x, I'm gonna use sub the 2x, right? And then du would be one half du, right? Yeah. And there's a two in front of it, isn't it? Yeah. So that means that it's gonna be just one. So that's gonna be one. But what is the integration of cosine? Positive sine, right? Yeah. So that's going to be sine x. So plus sine of x, or but in this case it would be my 2x, right? Okay, and that's from 0 to pi. Now, again, I have the double angle that I'm going to replace with my uh, cosine squared, right? So in this case right here, my cosine squared is going to turn into a double angle so it's going to turn into plus 1 over 4 pi integration 0 to pi what's that going to turn into 1 half okay so it's 1 plus cosine of 4x why is this one 4x now it's a double angle of the of the 2x right 
It's a double double. Yeah, it's a double double. Don't they have those at Whataburger? Or is that is that like a in and out? Menu? That's an in and out. Okay. I don't eat either place, so that's why. Okay, so now I can do that. So now uh, let's go ahead and let's work the right hand side. So if I put this in, let me see, I get 1 over 4 pi times pi. Uh, what is sine at 2 pi? So I plugged it in. Sine at 2 pi is going to be 0, right? Okay, so plus 0 minus 0. Sine at 0 is going to be? Two times zero is zero, right? Yeah. Sine at zero is zero. Yeah. Okay, so that's all this piece right here. Okay, that's all that. So plus my other side, which is going to be one over four. Uh, let's make that eight pi. Why am I making that eight pi? Brought out that one half. So it's going to give me x, right? X. Okay, plus, so think about it mentally again, right? The problem is my 4x inside there. So I'm going to use up the 4x, right? And 4x, so my du is going to be 1 over 4, right? So it's 1 over 4. So I'm going to have 1 over 4 times sine, right? So integration of cosine is sine of 4x from 0 to pi. So the left-hand side, what are we going to come up with? This is going to be what? All this left-hand side is just going to leave me with what? One just one-fourth, right? Yeah. Because I have a pi left over on the inside. But it's times one fourth with a pi on the bottom, so it just gives me one fourth. Okay, so now on this one over here, uh, I'm bringing it down again. So one over eight pi, and that's going to be pi. Now, uh, let me see. Four times pi. Four times pi. So that's going to be four pi. So that's going to be twice around the circle, which is zero which is still zero, right? And it's gonna be minus uh, zero, right? And this one right here, so sine at zero is zero, times one fourth plus zero. So this is gonna give me, uh, what's it gonna leave me with, one eighth? Yeah. So I have one fourth plus one eighth, which is gonna give me a grand total of Three eighths. The average area under this is going to be three eighths. Are you guys okay with this or no? Everything I said makes sense? Wait, is it average area or average value? <laughs> the average area. Find the average value of the function. And the function is of the area, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Since the function is the area, so it's going to be the average area. But average value of the function. Okay, so next thing, we're going to have these things. All right, so I keep adding this stuff, and hopefully uh, you guys will be like, oh, hey, that's important. Maybe I like right there. Here's your double angle, uh, double angle sine, double angle and cosine, All right? Yeah. Okay, good. All right. Uh, so this nasty. <sighs> One of the exponents is odd. So if it's going to be odd, it's going to be slightly different. So let's rewrite it so I can have an even. Kind of like I had last time, right? 
So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to change this into, let's go integration of sine of sine to the fourth x times cosine of cosine one, one half x times sine of x dx. Okay, so that sine to the fourth is a nice even number. Remember how we were talking about yesterday, how it, how it works out and it like fits very good? So what am I gonna replace sine to the fourth with? The Pythagorean identity? <laughs> yes. What would the Pythagorean identity be? One minus cosine. Minus squared cosine squared x squared, squared times cosine one half x times sine of x dx. All right, expand it. So if I expand it, integration of one minus two cosine x squared x, and that's going to be plus cosine fourth x times cosine one half x times sine of x dx. At this current moment right now is the time to soldier boy. What? <laughs> you! you. Oh my god. That was so long. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> I, I've been building up for that joke for at least like since we started this. <laughs> Just trying to get to that so point. Long. That's the whole reason you came to the podcast. Yeah, he was sick, but he's like. You know, you know when you like, you have to like build up to a joke. You know, yeah. you like keep building up to it. But yeah, I'm like four yeah. weeks into this one. And then nobody gets it. Uh, oh my god. <coughs> All right, so we're gonna use sub this one. So what is it? What am I gonna use sub? Cosine. I'm gonna say cosine. So u equals cosine, right? <laughs> Look at a <them> ball. <laughs> okay, so d u is. Negative sine x dx, right? Wait, Mr. Plotson, did you make that one up yourself or did you find it? Which one? The solar uh, No, that one's mine. That's all me. You know what? I, 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 okay, all right. It's almost like I'll post it on this video. Yeah, it's like, yeah, you can make a meme though. Like, a this is a lot of views for doubling. I know, right? Okay. All right, so that's, this yeah. du is going to help me out. What's. It is. What do I have to take out? So it's gonna be nice and clean because my sine x goes away with my dx, right? Mm -hmm. But I still have to count for that negative. Still have to count for that negative. So I'm gonna put the negative. Where's the negative gonna go? Let's put it outside, right? It, it's a constant. So I'm gonna say negative integration of quantity one minus two u squared plus u to the fourth, right, times u to the one half, and this is du. And before I get to my next page in my notes right here, um, I'm going to I'm going to carry this over to the next one. So I'm going to I'm going to distribute my u to the one half into there. So it's going to give me negative integration of u one half minus two u to the one or would it be squared five over two? Five halves. Because isn't two should be four okay. over two, right? Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm thinking of the other rule. Okay. Multiply them. It's fine. 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Plus, this is 8 over 2, and that's 9 over 2, right? D. All right, so I'm going to carry this over, insert page after. So my integration, right, negative integration, uh, what did it say? U, one half. Minus two U, minus two U. Okay, thank you. All right, so let's go ahead and integrate this. So it is negative bracket uh, u to the three halves, right? Mm -hmm. And that's two thirds, right? Yep. Okay, so it's minus u to the seven halves, and that's going to be two sevenths. Yes? Two, that's already oh, yes, you're right. Yeah. Uh, so it should be a four there. Thank you. All right, good catch. All right. All right. Uh, and next one's going to be plus, let's say, u to the 11 halves. And that's going to be 2 over 11, right? And what am I forgetting here? I heard it. Plus C. I'm going to say a lot. That mic is too I know. Plus C. All right, let's go ahead and distribute Plus that back. <laughs> so as I go through and change that out, because my U's are cosines, right? Yeah. Okay, good. So it's going to be a negative 2 cosine of 3 halves, right? X over 3 plus 4 cosine the 7 halves x over 7 and minus 2 cosine to the 11 oh my pen's running out of ink 11 halves x over 11 plus c are we okay <laughs> Basically telling you what's up right here. Um, next one right here. Integrals form tangent secant. Okay, or cotangent cosecant. Um, it's the same identity, but it's where you use a Pythagorean identity off of this. And it says right here, uh, see, u is equal to secant and du is to secant tangent. All right. In this case right here, this is example, what, six? Six. All right. So uh, let's go ahead and make this a even number. So to make it an even number, what am I going to do? Tan squared, right? Okay. So tan squared. Tan squared x times tangent x times secant fourth x dx. And so the Pythagorean identity. So we know tangent is, here, I'm going to show you guys my, my neat trick that goes along with this. And if I had something to throw, I would hit a foreigner with my, my throwy thing because he's playing with his cell phone again. <laughs> okay. All right, I'm going to show you guys how to do this. This is actually pretty easy. So my Pythagorean identity says that sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. And we know tangent is a ratio of sine over cosine, right? 
Say yes. yes. I'm going to divide everything by cosine. Because I want sine on top, cosine on bottom. Because I, I want to turn it into a tangent. Divide everything by cosine squared. So this is going to turn into sine squared over cosine squared plus cosine squared over cosine squared equals 1 over cosine squared. Sine over cosine gives me tangent squared. Plus 1 equals 1 over cosine is secant squared x. Okay. So this is an easy way to try and remember it. If you know what tangent is, you want cotangent is, it's a way to make it every time for yourself. I can't remember these things, and I teach this crap all day long. I shouldn't say crap. You know, let's, let's bring that money in. Anyway. That's my job. No, no, that's my job. All right. Um, okay, so I can replace it with... So I'm trying to get tangent by itself. So what would I do to get the tangent alone? Subtract one. <coughs> so we get tangent is equal to secant squared minus one. Does that make sense? So I can replace that now, and I'm going to have a whole bunch of secants. That's going to help me out. So I'm going to erase this so I have more room. So for those people following along, you know, with the at-home version of the game, uh, make sure, you know, you have that copy down first. So this is going to be secant. So integration of secant squared x, that's a square, uh, minus 1, right, times tangent of x times secant to the fourth x dx. All right. Okay, so let's say secant. How can I get rid of secant? No. No. You'll see why. Can, can, I, can I use sub? I, since I have a secant squared and a secant fourth, they're all even numbers, right? Yeah. Okay. Could, could I use a secant squared? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Can I take the derivative of that? Maybe. I so. Let's say, let's say u is equal to secant squared x. So du is equal to, what's the derivative of secant? This is going to be, okay, secant tangent, right? But now, this is going to be a chain rule, so it's going to be a 2 secant x, right? So that's chain, right? Yeah. Times derivative of secant, which is? Secant tangent, another secant tangent. So yeah. Secant x tangent x. So now, look, I have D, oh, come on, DU is equal to 2 secant squared x tangent x. And there's a DX here. So then we sub, can we just call that secant uh, 4x? Okay, so I'm going to take out a tangent, definitely, right? Yeah, yeah. And then I'm going to take out two of my secants, right? Mm -hmm. Yes? Yep. Okay, but then what is my du going to be? Should it be one half? Yeah. yeah one half off. du. Okay, so it should be one half du. So I'm going to replace all of this with just my dx. So I'm going to take away... Two of these, two of these right here, two of those, my dx and my tangent, right? Yep. 
So that leaves me with, since u is secant squared, this is going to become u, no, 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 it's secant squared, right? Minus 1, right? <laughs> Times another u because there is two of those left, right? There's a secant squared left, right? Okay, and it's going to be du. And I still have my one half, right? Uh, but I want to put my one half out front. Oh, man, that's ugly. Come on, I can do better. So, one half integration of u squared minus u du. What I tell you about this stuff just working out nice and pretty? <laughs> so one half of that's going to be u to the third over three minus u squared over two plus c. That is going to be uh, u. 3 over 6 minus u squared over 4, right, and plus c. And so this is going to be my u is secant squared, right? Yeah. So if I'm plugging in a secant squared, so secant squared to the third power is secant, secant, six. secant <laughs> 6x over 6 minus secant 4x over 4 plus c. Okay now. Okay, I know I am missing a couple of the examples uh, in the notes, but okay, we we have to get going on this tomorrow. We uh, we're we're doing tomorrow's not a homework day because homework day is going to be moved to Friday because I'm not going to be here Friday. Okay, all right. So like, share, and subscribe.